In exercise 10, we're looking at Krieging and uh, how we can use it to, to in a way, discover uh, information about data. Especially, is, this is going to be useful in this lab because we don't know what shape files we're working with. So, uh, if you go ahead and add in your labs that you download, I mean, your data that you downloaded from courses.utexas.edu. I'm just going to go here to my H drive and uh, GeoCraft Lab 10 and there's this test points geodatabase that we downloaded from the uh, from the course website and we talked about geodatabases in class but basically basically it's a database that has a collection of geographic information in it so these are tables so what you get whenever you download this is point A's, B, C, and X, and we're just going to go ahead and add those four in. So we're going to be doing analysis on these different points to find out what they are, because we don't know what these points represent. And uh, there's different ways that we can explore the data in this lab. Uh, what we did in class is that we used the Arc Toolbox, uh, Spatial Analyst Tools, uh, Distance, oh, no, sorry, not Distance, uh, interpolation and we use the Krieging tools here and this uh, this interpolates the surface from the Krieging uh, Kri by using Krieging methods uh, and we talked about those statistical methods in class but you can take these certain points like point A um, you know you can choose something off the attribute table and if I look here at point A's attribute table you can see here that it has uh, a value and an object ID this value is what we're trying to find out what this represents. Each of these different shape files here have in their attribute table a column called value and we're trying to find out what that what that name should be in value. So um, you know and then after whenever you have your you choose your output where to put it at. I'm gonna call it like A Krieging point two, why not? And then uh, the other defaults are fine. This is just the cell size of the rasters. Anyway, so I hit OK and it's going to execute a uh, raster interpolation and this kind of gives you a visual way of seeing what these points mean, what those values mean um, one thing I was telling you guys in class though to make sure you pay attention to where the computer chooses to uh, make the breakpoints as you can see here the breakpoints here in this classified scheme doesn't give it justice if I switch over to stretched and, and you know choose a different kind of uh, bipolar uh, color gradation I like those for this one I can hit OK and I'll get a different view so now I can see okay this area here is the high areas this area here is the low areas middle areas and you can kinda of see patterns and you gotta I want like in the lab you're supposed to think what these patterns mean one thing that we didn't cover in the lab um, is that we can use also uh, geoanalytical tools so if you go to tools and extensions and you turn on your geo statistical analyst that's going to let you use geo statistical analyst toolbar um, I'm just right clicking on the gray space here to activate the geo statistical analyst toolbar um, or you can of course use it under view toolbars geo statistical analyst toolbar once you're in there um, you can explore data and this is where you can do things like the normal QQQ plot so see so at point A if I look at value uh, as the attribute, um, I can see how these these uh, points are distributed um, on over over the uh, you know this QQ plot. Um, you can, I can do all different types of transformations on it, um, and I can add this QQ Q plot to my layout. I can add to layout and it becomes a little a little box in my layout. So you see, so this is something that you can use to make a map that has statistical information in it too. Um, in the assignment he said like uh, what's like the standard deviation, the spatial distribution, maximum, uh, minimum values represented, these other in informations. I can find these out by doing explore data and looking at stuff like histogram. So this is going to give me and what I'm exploring right now is the raster. If I click on point A here I'll explore point A and I can do a histogram on that. But I'm going to get the same information because point A and point and the uh, Krieging hold similar information. So you see, like now I have 
the accounts at 271 minimum maximum mean standard I can hit add to layout and that's gonna add this this uh, this plot to my layouts Oop. I hit add to layout too many times so you see now I have my histogram on my layout I have my my points I have my Kriegian raster um, other things I can do is so what size area is covered and there's all a semi variogram so let's, let's try that out um, if I try this semi variogram I can see here um, different other kinds of information so I'm going to switch this over to value so I, I get this kind of like the semi vari uh, variance over here I can do covariance um, and I can see this information here and of course I can just hit add to layout and that's going to come in into my into my layout. So, you know, think about the the statistics stuff that uh, Dr. Dennis talked about in class, and what what we've talked about. Um, you want to be able to identify what these these shape files represent: uh, point A, uh, point uh, B, point C, and point X. So they can be you know many things. It can be uh, elevations or populations or tree heights or or business locations. Um, in the in the exercise it says that you want a two page description so write up a paper I would like to see some some maps too that would be nice um, as uh, figures in your paper that you refer to um, you know so like making something like a map like this would be nice um, and then also like like use use your visual maps and uh, diagrams to determine what point A is so that is um, exercise 10. Just remember, use geostatistical analyst as well as using the tool the toolbox and uh, the Kriegian tool under spatial analyst.